Hi there everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach and welcome to another one of my album reviews and we are talking about therapy. Uh, this is the Trouble Gum album, which is, according to my computer, the first album after Hats Off to the Insane, which I already covered, which was an EP of theirs. There are a couple songs on here that are actually on that album already, so I've covered them already. I don't really need to go into it again, then I will let you know. Um, this album kicks off with the song Knives, and it lets you know kind of what you're getting into. This album, in this day and age, with so many different classifications for our music and stuff like that, I don't even know what I'd put this album under anymore. Uh, once upon a time, they would have fallen under metal, maybe alternative. Um, they kind of have a bit of a, you know, a metal-y sound to them. They have a bit of a grungy alternative kind of sound to them. There's even stuff in here that reminds me of being, uh, you know, it'd be ahead of its time because it reminds me of that, uh, third wave of punk you know if you got the first wave being like the late 70s early 80s and then you got that second wave being you know like when green day first came out like what was it 93 94 ish and then you've got that third wave later on with the poser pop punk i'm gonna call it i don't know what the proper name is for you know like the blink 182s and stuff like that um simple plan you know whatever the hell you want to call it stuff i don't know a little bit of that kind of in here it, this sounds a little a little disjointed and kind of a little all over the place i enjoy the artistic expressionism in this album musically the riffs man they got some riffs some great great riffs throughout this entire album but I think some of the best songs on this album I've already talked about. Uh, Knives kicks off the album well. It gives you the vibe. You're on to the next song, which is Screamager. I like that one. That one's a good one. I've already covered that one. I covered that off on Hats Off to the Insane, so go check that one out. Uh, Hellbelly, I like. Uh, it gets me kind of going a little bit, but doesn't take it too far. It's kind of interesting as I'm looking right now at all the times on the songs and all the songs, like there is no song. There's one song, sorry. There's one track. I'm not even call a song. One track on this album that clocks in at over four minutes. Everything else is... It looks like 355 is the highest or less. Most of it is in the three minute range somewhere, somewhere between three minutes, 355. A couple songs under, but you get what I'm saying. When we're talking averages, I want to say the average song is probably around 320. But they really do feel longer. Uh, that is where a lot of the different from punk kind of vibe comes in. It's very rare, I'll say a punk song feels like it takes too long. Some of these songs definitely feel like they take too long. Great riffs. And I think the problem is there's too many riffs being jammed into one song. You know, instead of being one or two really good polished out, not even necessarily polished out if we're talking punk, but one or two really nicely polished out riffs with, you know, some intros, middles, and exits. Um, instead of that, you're getting kind of... Well, we're going to say like a punk variation of either, you know, uh, Metallica's and Justice for All or Megadeth's um, Hangar 18, you know, whereas our, well, song, I, both songs work, uh, when I say Hangar 18, sorry, I mean Rust in Peace. Both song, both albums or those two songs I mentioned works where it's just, you know, like a million riffs jammed in together. But on here, they don't accomplish it the same way those particular songs or those albums do. You know, here it just makes it feel unnecessarily long. Uh, Stop It, You're Killing Me, Nowhere, Die Laughing, Unbeliever, Trigger Inside, Lunacy Booth, Isolation. I guarantee you there are people that like all of those tracks I just mentioned. They're not bad when I've got it kind of playing in the background. 
But I will be honest, man. Having to listen to this album multiple times to do this review, those songs were brutal. And why did I stop there? Because the next song up is the song Turn, which I've covered already on Hats Off to the Insane, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, Femtex isn't bad. Unrequited isn't bad. Then you get to uh, Brainsaw at the end, which I think is enjoyable. Then for some reason, I don't know, I, I'm assuming it's a band joke, okay? Now, the song Brains Out only lasts about two and a half, three minutes. And then it goes into, now when you look at the computer, the whole track, the Brain Saw track is listed as 25 minutes and 23 seconds. So when the actual Brain Saw song ends, they do You Are My Sunshine. And when it, and they get to the, and please don't take my sunshine away. Well, the whole mix makes it sound like it's crackly, like it's on a record. It could have been for all I know. But when it gets to please don't take my sunshine away, it, all you hear is away, away, away. And it just skips and it goes on and on and on and on. Until you hit 20. 25 minutes and 23 seconds. Oh my god, it was stupid. What a waste. I get the joke. I get one to have a good laugh. I've seen other bands do it. Uh, and some do it well and some don't, you know. I'm all for the good old-fashioned days of hidden tracks. But there's no hidden track at the end of it. There's no payoff. It's just this on-running static. And then it gets to a point like towards the... I can't... I don't even listen the whole way through. It gets to a point where, you know, it's just a static click, click, click. Now, I'm sure if I cranked up the stereo or I did something, there might be something quiet or hiding underneath, or if I reverse the uh, polarity on the speakers or some stupid... Oh, God, who knows? Reality is, I remember... I remember there were a lot of guys that wore therapy shirts back when I was in high school. I do remember guys that had this on their shirts. And I, I do remember seeing this album in quite a few places. The reality is I don't understand why this album really seemed anywhere near as popular as it was. Three songs I definitely think are enjoyable. Scream a Gerb, uh, Hell Belly, and Turn. Definitely enjoy those to a degree. Um, then there's a couple that are minor enjoyables, but really this song just felt so frick. The album just felt so freaking long, so long. It was it was it was brutal, painful, horribly painful. Uh, anyways, folks, my thoughts, my views, my opinions. I'm I'm gonna leave it there. I I don't feel the need to pay any more time or attention to this album. God knows. It's not going to be in my playlist again anytime in the near future. All right. Let me know what your thoughts and views and opinions are. That is what the comment section is for. If there's songs on there you honestly think I'm just really not giving a fair shake to, please tell me in the comments. That's what that's what that's for. Uh, if, you know, there's other therapy albums I should check out, let me know on that one too. I mean, um... Uh, there's another one that's titled, uh, I don't know if I can say it on here anymore. I might get this video kind of accidentally censored. You know, a when you make a pact to for everybody to unalive themselves, an unalive pact, but that's not the name of it. You first, that's the name of it. You know, it's kind of tongue in cheek, really bad joke. Um, I have that album still to review, and that'll be the last of the therapy albums I have to review. Uh, so, I'll, you know, I'll probably get to that one and see what happens there. But outside of that, let me know what else you guys think. Uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. There is a link to Patreon down below. Peace, love, take care.